doesn't like fresh fruit. There's all types of fruit. There's all types of fruit. We got rotten fruit. Everybody had rotten fruit, bitter fruit. Has anybody had fruit that wasn't ready yet? Immature. We've all had them green, them green bananas that, that, that ain't cutting it, Doc. Them green bananas, I need that thing yellow just right. There ain't nothing like some fresh fruit. What about that watermelon? Y'all know when it's a little tart, but y'all know when you get that ice cold watermelon, ice cold. Ooh, ain't nothing like some ice cold watermelon. But there's all types of different fruit. There is nothing like fresh, fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. The Bible talks a lot about fruit. And I think as we go, just kind of go into his word a little bit, I just want to just give some definition on what, what exactly does he mean by fruit? Fruit is basically the evidence, the result, the byproduct. It's what, it's what this thing is actually producing. That's what he talks about fruit. We talk about the fruits of the spirit is love, joy. Like this is the evidence. This is the byproduct. This is what the fruit is. And he talked about like what spirit are we talking about? Because there's all types of spirits. But, 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 but Paul specifically talks about the Holy Spirit. And I just pray, I pray, I pray that you would get to know the Holy Spirit. You see, you see, you see the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Holy Spirit has feelings? Yes, he's known as a counselor, as a God, but he's also known as a person. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is 100% God? You know, I heard some people, every time you talk about the Holy Spirit, sometimes you get a lot of different camps because it's something you quite can't quite understand. You can't quite understand. You know, I was talking to a guy. He's like, man, I, I grew up with the church that I, I, we worship God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Bible. Anything spiritual, they wanted to give that thing to Heisman because they couldn't quite understand it. But the Holy Spirit is beautiful. His character, this is what he produces. He produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's all he does. Y'all know the song, all he do, all I do is win, win, win. That's all the Holy Spirit do. He just produces great things. Great things. He wants to produce those things in our life. And this morning, we are going to talk about that. Like what, what exactly... What, what, what exactly is the Holy Spirit and what kind of fruit does he produce and how do we get access to it? So I want to I want I want I want to I want to read in the book of Galatians chapter five, verse 16. This is what it says. It says this. So I, I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation, the law of Moses. So he comes out and he, and he, and he says that. He said, he said, there's two, there's two things at war inside of you, your flesh and the spirit. One of them is going to win. One of them is going to win. And now Paul gives a description what, what the fruits of the flesh is and then what the fruits of the spirit. Let's continue. It says this, the cravings of the self-life are obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way, senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinions, being envious of the blessings of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behaviors. We've all experienced that to some degree some more than others, but we know it's pretty obvious what the fruit of the flesh is. See, Paul says, man, there's a war, there's a battle, one's going to win. You know, the, uh, a couple weeks ago I said, I said, man, there, there's a wolf inside of every man and every person. One represents all the good things in the world, 
one represents all the bad. Which one's going to win? The one you decide to feed. That's the one that's going to win. So we got that. He said there's a war. There's a battle. Here's what my flesh just naturally craves. It's pulled in this direction. And now he says, but let's continue. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And then verse 24, it says this, those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So we got two conflicting, conflicting battles that's going on within us. Our flesh, and if you are in Christ, the Holy Spirit. If you are not in Christ, the flesh. <laughs> Your flesh is what you are battling. Maybe a good conscience. The Holy Spirit is different than a good conscience. We are all, we are all born by, by the nature of being born. We were all born with a conscience. It's different than the Holy Spirit. It's different. Only when you are in Christ does God give you the gift of the Holy Spirit, which produces these incredible things. So here's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Three facts. Three facts on fresh fruit of the Spirit. Three facts. Number one, fresh fruits are spirit produced. I'm going to say that again. Fresh fruits, these fruits of the spirit, they are spirit produced. Only the Holy Spirit produces these things. Now some would say, man, I can experience love and joy and peace and patience and, and, and those things are powerful. Those things are powerful because we've all experienced that to some degree. But this morning, what I want to share with you, these fruits, these fruits that remain, that actually impact, that is a catalyst for change, that actually shifts things, because we want to get the glory. I know I always wanted to get the glory. I wanted to, I wanted to love. I want to do all these nice things so other people could tell other people what kind of great guy that Rob Johnson was. But, but what he says, these fruits... We are just merely conduits. We are just merely vessels. Because what people need to experience is not the love from Rob Johnson or the love from Derek Brown or the love from Ivan Ross, my man. But what they need to experience is God's love through us. That's what this is talking about. These are the fruits. But it's spirit produced. It's spirit produced. It's spirit produced. Yes, I believe you can, you can, you can, you can, you can maybe do some self help and read some books and and, and do some of those things and, and and be a good person. But there's a difference between being a good person and being a godly person. And I believe what God wants us to do, He wants to release His Spirit, these fruits. So number one, it's spirit produced. Number two. Fresh fruits have no preservatives. You can't manufacture it. You can't force it. It is it's a natural byproduct. You know, we've all had fruit, canned fruit. Anybody like canned fruit? Nobody like canned fruit. It ain't the same. It, no preservatives. These fruits, it's like, it's like it has no preservatives. It's the real thing. It comes from the vine. Derek talked about, man, he said, the, the, the Bible says, he said, it says this, that, that I am the vine. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. It's like, apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. He says, man, that's, that's a pretty bold claim. You think you're pretty good? Okay, but he says, man, you have no idea what good is until you experience me. He says, I am the vine. 
you just the branches. He says, apart from Christ, he said, you can't bear no fruit. You'll bear some fruit, but it ain't going to last. So, but with me, you could bear much fruit. So number one, this spirit, these fruits are spirit produced. Number two, there's no preservatives. It's the real thing, doc. And you know it. You can feel when things are manufactured. You can feel it. You can feel it when people just want something from you. You know what I'm saying? Or, or they're putting on. You can, you can feel it. You can feel it. You can feel the inauthenticity sometimes. But when you're filled with the Spirit, man, you can feel that as well. All he wants is something for you. He, just, he, just, he doesn't want anything from you. He just wants something for you. You know, in verse 25, this is what it says. I, I, I love this. It says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Every part of life, every part of our lives. And this is one of the things we've been talking about a lot. It's got to extend beyond a Sunday morning or a midweek Bible study or, or, or it's got to, it's got to extend beyond just head knowledge. It's got to get to our head, to our heart, to our mind, to our eyes, to our ears, to our mouth, through our bodies, every part. He says we, every part, no preservatives. It's the real thing. And finally, fresh fruits are meant to be enjoyed by others. Fruits, these things are meant to be enjoyed. They ain't just decorations. The whole purpose is to give people vitamins and nutrients, is give people something. They're meant to be enjoyed by others. There's a purpose for it. Serving. You know, sometimes we feel like we're running on empty. Sometimes we feel like we're running on empty, like we ain't got nothing left. Some of y'all moms... <laughs> And dads, feel like y'all got nothing left. Like you've just been giving, you've just been pouring. Guess what? I got good news for you and bad news. Good news is that's the point. Bad news is that's the point. That's the point. The point is that other people can enjoy it. But when we are connected to Christ, when we're connected to the vine, we go back to the source. And then guess what? He can, he'll, he'll pour out that. And then we can have fresh fruit all day long, 24-7. When we get depleted, you just got to go back to the source. Go back. That's all he does. He produces these things. You're saying, I want that to be a reality in my life. Who wouldn't want that? Well, three things. Yes, we need to understand that, that these fruits of the Spirit he's talking about are Spirit-produced. Yes, absolutely, that there's no preservative. It's the real thing, Doc. It's the real thing. Jesus, he was the real thing. Last week, we celebrated Easter, proved he was the real thing. He's the real thing. And they are meant to be enjoyed, but, but how do I get this? Number one. You must be filled. You must be filled. And again, I talked about, I was like, there's a difference between knowing about God, knowing about somebody, but then really knowing, knowing. It's a big difference. You know, back in the 90s, Michael Jordan had that, had that Gatorade commercial. Is it in you? Is it in you? And my question this morning is, is he in you? Is the Holy Spirit in you? And here's, here's some things that I just feel like, I mean, when you, when, you, when, you, when you look at just the disciples and you look at in the book of Acts, like they were, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus left, he said, I will give you an advocate and a helper that's going to help you with everything. They were filled. They were filled. You know, nowadays there's this, there's this, there's this ideology that, 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 man, you know, that everybody has God in them. 
It's like this new age, new age type of thinking. And I'm here to tell you, that's not true. The Holy Spirit is given as a gift when you say yes and you bow your knee to King Jesus and you allow him to infiltrate every area of your life. He gives us the gift. You know, I'm amazed at like the, um, the Metro this year. We have so many Division I talent, probably more talent than I've probably ever seen. And, and there was a guy that, that I know that that, that, that Coach Scott Frost was after. Avante Graham out of Westside, four-star recruit, getting recruited by LSU. And bad news for Nebraska. As much as, as much as Nebraska was pursuing this dude, he chose to go to Minnesota. Nothing against them gophers. But the reality is you have to respond to the invitation. God will always pursue us. He's been pursuing you all the day long. He has an incredible plan for your life, but he will not force you to say yes. He won't do it. But here's five marks just really quickly. I don't want to go through this too long because the question is, is the Holy Spirit in me? And here's, here, here's five things just to consider. Number one is the assurance of salvation. Do you know without a doubt if you were to go, if you were to go, that you would be with Jesus? Do you believe without a doubt? I'm talking about without a shadow of a doubt. That's one mark to know if the Holy Spirit is in you. Number two is a love for Jesus. A love for Jesus. No one loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit. No one. A genuine love for the name and the fame of Jesus? Or is he just another guy? Is he just a guy that I go and people talk about? No, that is an indicator if you have the Holy Spirit in you. If you have a love for Jesus. The third one is a love for evangelism, a love for sharing your faith. You see, the Bible was clear. He said, he said, he said, he said, go and make disciples of all nations go and make as action words but 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 going and sharing i remember for me for me i remember i knew when i was called to ministry i knew it 2005 i took a year off of playing basketball 2004 i took a year off and i traveled all through asia and all around the philippines and i would i would play with these sports teams and all we would do is, is we play basketball and we use basketball as a tool to share our faith Man, there was no greater joy. No greater joy. There was no greater joy than I had. I was like, man, now, all along I felt like I was overlooked and I was, I was this kid always wanting, always wanting something from somebody else. But I remember there was no greater joy than I had to just share people the love of Christ. I said, man, there was no joy. And they'd ask me to share my testimony. Man, I'd get butterflies like I was playing in the championship game but a genuine love for, for sharing people about Jesus. Number four, evidence is speaking in tongues. There is a heavenly language in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts chapter two, I believe that when the Holy Spirit came and, it all, and all of them, they were gathered, there was 120 of them and, and, and they were gathering. And guess what? They all spoke different languages. So I actually believe in that particular chapter that he's talking about specific languages. But if you go and you search the scriptures, there's other passages that talks about just the language between you and God. And sometimes you don't know what the words, the words to say. Some of y'all don't know this <laughs> because, because yes, we are a charismatic church, but you don't see, you don't hear people doing that all the time at our church. I do it every day. I have to be filled. I have to commune with them every single day. But this is just one of the evidences. It's not the evidence. It's just one. Another evidence. Is it a conviction for holiness and righteousness? I mean, it's called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. 
So number one is we got to be filled. The second one is we have to be full. Be full. And what they're talking about here, when you read in the book of Acts and the disciples was filled, in, 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 in chapter 8, it talks about Stephen. He was one of the first, first martyr. But he ended up, he ended up, they said he was full of the Spirit. It just wasn't in him. He was full. He was full. You know, I know this time brings out some of the best people who love grilling. They love grilling. Oh, they love grilling. And they love that marination. Who liked that marinade? Yeah. That barbecue sauce. But see, the thing about marination, you got to let that stuff sit. You got to let it soak. You got to put all your juices and berries. You got to put all that stuff on your, on your, on your meat, and you got to let it sit overnight. You got to let that stuff come up. And then once that thing is, I'm talking about saturated saturated there's a difference it's saturated then you put that thing on that hot grill Ooh, that thing is fire fire there's a difference if I was just gonna buy some steak and just slap some barbecue sauce on it on top and then put it on the grill it's a very big difference and the reality is many of us that's what we do with the Holy Spirit. We just try to slap them on a little bit whenever we need them. When we need something, let me slap, let me slap a little bit of this on. I need a little bit of prayer here. I need a little bit of guidance here. I'm coming up. I'm coming into a, per a certain situation. I need something. Let's try to slap it on. But the, the, but, but the disciples, they were filled. They were baptized. They were immersed in it. It was married. It was all in. And these fruits was just a byproduct of just staying connected to them. They allowed them just to, ooh, just get all up in there, all up in the insides. It's the Holy, Holy Spirit all up in your insides. Because what we want to do is we want to live out of the overflow. Out of the overflow. Hey, I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt something. I had a thought this morning. I had a thought this morning, and I said, I'm going to try it. I don't know how it's going to look, but I'm going to put it on my Bible, so maybe it'll give me some, some better, better support. Can y'all see this? I was up in my office this morning, and I was thinking about our lives, how this right here represents our life. I mean, we get filled with so much just stuff, hurt, brokenness, wounds. And for some of us who aren't Christians yet, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a hot mess up in here. Even for us who maybe are Christians, right? And, and, and maybe we, we, we want to dab a little bit of the Holy Spirit. Our lives look like this. It's all mixed up. We got stuff floating up in here, all types of stuff. But here's what I believe God wants to do. If you want to be fruitful, you know, the scripture talks about how, how Jesus said he was living water. I'm going to try this. This might be a fail, but we're going to try this anyway. No matter what your life looks like here, no matter what, no matter what you've done, no matter the regret, no matter the shame, no matter what, your life looks like now. When you say yes to Jesus, he drops something in you. He drops something into your bank account. Similar to that 1200 that stimulus check that you got, that I got. Hey, he dropped something in. It wasn't there all the time, he dropped something in. And guess what, and now, I believe he wants us to be poured. He, if you, we would just allow the Holy Spirit to pour into our lives. You see what happens? All that junk that's in there, it says he just doesn't want us to be full. Look, all that junk, we still got junk. We're all a work in progress. We're all a work in progress. I got stuff, man, we got stuff. 
But guess what? It's an unlimited supply. He says, man, if, when you're full of the Holy Spirit, not that jump trying to come in sometimes. You feel what I'm saying? Sometimes you slip. Sometimes you just choose to disobe be disobedient, but it can't stay that long because you're full. And then any time, any time, you see, you have an unlimited supply of the Holy Spirit. We say, God, I want more of you. I want more. I want to be soaked in. I want that marination and all that junk. It starts to get clear. And the more and the more that we allow God to come into our lives, the more that he does that, the more we invite him. He's not angry. He's not disappointed. He loves you. He wants something for you. If we would allow him to come into our lives and allow him to love us, allow him to pour his spirit out on us, your lives will begin to look a little bit different. My life will begin to look a little bit different. You see, we must first be filled. The second, we must be full. We're all full of something. What are you full of? And the result is we will be fruitful, full of fruit. You want more love? You want more joy? You want more peace? You want more kindness in your life? More gentleness? You need more self-control? I got bad news. You can't do it on your own. I got great news. <laughs> when you say yes to Jesus, he gives us the Holy Spirit who leads, he guides, he comforts. My prayer is that you would get to know the Holy Spirit. You would get to know him. He is 100% God. Don't get it twisted. He is 100% God. And, that, and it blows my mind away when I even think about Jesus' life. He was led by the Spirit all the way up to 30 years old. And guess what happened? He was baptized, filled, immersed. He did not even perform a miracle until then. Until then. Until he was immersed. Yes, he was led by the Spirit. He was immersed. Then he performed miracles. He started his ministry. I truly believe this time, this quarantine, God is getting our attention. He wants us to be immersed. He wants us to be immersed, be obsessed with him. So we can live fruitful lives. The life that you want. The life that I want. It's got to be spirit produced. It's got to be spirit produced. So here's what I'd love for you to do as you, as we close. A couple things that I just encourage you to do, knowing that it's tax season, <laughs> get our W-2s, I want you to get your W-3. That's your worship on. Listen, find time, get away, go for a hike. Do what you do. Maybe, it, I don't know what it looks like for you. Maybe it's music for you, maybe it's creation, maybe it's journaling, maybe it's just listening to some solid biblical teaching, getting in his word. I don't know what that looks like for you. But find some time to get your worship on. Get in his word. Listen. Get in his word. Please get in his word. Read Galatians. Read this over and over and over and over again until it gets into your soul. And number three is like, tell somebody about it. Be a witness. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Invite somebody to church. Tell them about your story, what God is doing you. You don't have to have it all figured out. Nobody wants somebody who has it all figured out. Nobody can relate to that. You don't have to clean yourself up. Right now, where you're at, it's like, man, this is what God is doing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 you might want to check this out. I don't know. There's something going on the inside of me that I can't quite explain. Next thing is, man, join a connect group. Listen, we got to have, for the next six weeks, seven weeks, where we're going to be, uh, where, where Mother's Day, we're taking a week off. Listen, get into a group. We got these connect groups on Zoom. We got men's group, women's groups. You need to be connected with somebody. Get connected. Get connected. Please get connected. Don't go into isolation mode. Don't do it. Don't retreat. Lean in. 
Lean in. Also, this upcoming Wednesday, we were we've, we've been having prayer nights on Thursday um, because we were doing our Armor of God study. But we said we're going to change that to Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights. Man, come be a part. We're going to have some prayer, worship, and communion. Man, just tune in. Tune in. Just get connected. Get connected. And, and listen, if this is new, 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 new stuff for you, talking about the Holy Spirit, man, my, 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 my encouragement for you is dive in. Get to know him. You know, a few books that I highly recommend is, is this one, Holy Spirit by John Bevere. It's powerful. It's a classic. A.W. Tozer, The Counselor. There's one that I like by Francis Chan called The Forgotten God. That, that title is powerful, The Forgotten God. Listen, Bridge fam, could it be God is doing something? He wants, he wants to be fruitful in your life more than you do. But remember, number one, the fresh fruit, that fresh thing, I believe he wants to do something fresh, but that fresh fruit, it's got to be spirit produced. Number two, it's got to be the real thing, God. No preservatives. And number three, our fruits are meant to be enjoyed by others. Are you filled? Are you full? Are you full of fruit? If you are, awesome. If not, awesome. You got an opportunity. I have an opportunity. If you have any prayer requests, we would love to pray for you. God, we thank you so much for your word in Galatians, God. God, I pray that you would help us as we're going through this series, that we would be aware that it is the Holy Spirit that produces these fruits. I pray, God, for, 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 for a relationship with the Holy Spirit like never before. I pray we would love the Holy Spirit like we would love Jesus, that we would love the Father. I pray it wouldn't be like the title of that book, The Forgotten God. Oh, how much you want to do in us how you want to consume us, how you want us to be, be marinated. So when we walk in our lives, they would, just, they would just fall off. The fruit would just fall off for people to take and to enjoy. And that they would taste and see that you are good, that we would not get the glory. It would be all about you. And then when we're running low, that we would go right back to the source. We would right, go right back to you. God, would you help us be that? Would you help us live like that? God, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, please connect to a group. If you got anything, you have that number. Hey, if you haven't said yes to Jesus and you want to, please let somebody know. Our team's going to be on. We would love to pray for you. We would love to show with you what the Bible says about what it looks like to follow in Christ. But listen, Bridge Fam and those who are tuning in, thank you. Thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. I pray you would be full of the Holy Spirit this week. We'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, yep. And then we'll see you again next week. God bless you. You take care.